Praise the Lord, wonderful people of God. Uh, we come to you right from this place, right into your living rooms, into your offices, and wherever this broadcast may find you. We hope you're keeping safe and above all, you're trusting and praying that the Lord of heaven will watch over you every day as you move into your home and get out of your home. Even as we come this morning to worship the name of the Lord, we'll be reading from the book of Psalms 46. The psalmist begins by saying in, the, in verse 1 that God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Two says, therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Amen. Four says, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in her midst and she will not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. And 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations and I'll be exalted in the earth. And it ends by saying, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And I'll add on by saying that the God of Jacob, who is our refuge and strength, is our friend. Even in the tough, tough times, be reminded that the Lord calls us his very own friends. So just put a smile on your face and know that the Lord has got your back. Amen. The Lord is there for you still in the same business of watching over you, your family, your job, your business, and everything that concerns you. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for this day, for this is a day that you've made and will rejoice and be glad in it. Lead us even as we worship. May your glory come down. May your glory come into our homes, into our offices, and wherever this time may find us. We bless your name, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Let me see your hands. Put those hands together. Full of me that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking?
come to declare it that we love you. We will love you. Yes, God. We will love you. We will love you. We will love you. For all you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus. You lifted us up out of trouble, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You healed our pain. You restored our hope. You gave us strength.
Welcome to Hope for Today. Friends, our hope for today is the Spirit of God interceding through us. The Bible says, says I have heard their cry. God hears our cry. We are not settlers in this world. You need to use 
the very tool that God has put in your hands. Whatever assignment he has given you, whatever task he has given you, he has also given you a tool. Our God is mighty. The Bible says he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. The Bible says what he decides to do, he can do mightily. We do good because we are God's children. A dreamer, he never loses hope. Every Sunday at 6 p.m. only on Google TV. Hope for Today is a broadcast of Deliverance Church, Uganda. Uh, good morning, saints. I'd like to welcome you to this online service this Sunday morning. Um, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to come to you in your living rooms, whether you are in motion in your cars, whether you are alone or with friends and family, you can call your, your loved ones to come and listen. I thank the pastors of this church for giving me this opportunity. Uh, today our topic is uh, launching into the deep. Uh, it's based on um, uh, the book of uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse uh, 1 to 11. Please allow me to read. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, that is Lake of Galilee, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and told the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lie down the net. And, the, and when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boat so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who are with him were astonished at the catch of fish when they had, which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were brothers, who are partners, sorry, with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this sharing of your word. We pray, Lord our God, these words will bring life, will bring healing, will bring peace, will bring encouragement, will bring revelation, Lord, to our saints who are listening to us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So today I'd like to share on this topic, launching into the deep, how to move from failure to success beyond the wildest dreams. So Jesus is by the lake side. I've grown up by the lake. I know what happens. Part of my early childhood, I was in that fishing business as well as schooling. So this is early morning, and fishermen, by early morning, they will have returned from their fishing trip. So at the lake shore, you will find fishermen and fishmongers. And Jesus was strategic. He was looking for a crowd where he will minister the word of God. Of course, there you also have other traders. You find other traders. People who are making tea for the fishermen. People who have come to sell other things. And people going about with their business. So Jesus seeing that people were crowding around him because his fame had gone out, Jesus asked Peter, asked for a boat, and it was Peter's, and he said, please push out a little from the show. Let me speak to this crowd. Let me use your boat. And as Jesus, Jesus speaks and then ends, he tells Simon Peter, please launch out, let down your nets for a catch. And Peter, being an inexperienced man, he was probably by the age of around 30 years now. He had most likely lived all his life on the lake. He caught nothing. He had caught nothing. He had used all his tricks. 
But there was nothing. So Jesus told him, hey, you lay down your net. Go farther. Lay down your net for a catch. And Peter said, okay, I've toiled nothing. I mean, I've told all night and caught nothing. But if you say so, nevertheless at your word, I will let down the net. And of course, the, the end result is history. So what lessons can we learn from this story? Number one, to launch out, we must go farther. We must always keep going the extra mile. Even when we are tired and we have used all our resources and all our strength and all our knowledge, like Peter had used all his vast experience as a fisherman on that lake, we must consistently stretch our limits. When we stretch our limits, we extend our borders. And the world advances, the world improves, the world progresses because people are consistently pushing the limits. As a church and as Christians, we must not be left behind. We must consistently push our borders. That helps us to increase our capacity. For us as individuals, it may mean being trained, getting additional skill sets, getting competences that we may be able to compete in this world. And the Bible is full of stories of people who went the extra mile. I know it, some of us are workers and we just do barely enough to keep our jobs. But for us to be able to experience the rewards of our work, we must go the extra mile. We must consistently get out of our comfort zones and move out. There is more beyond. Like our theme for Deliverance Church and our church this year, for the past years, Isaiah 54, verse 2 and 3, the Bible says, enlarge the place of your tent. Do not spare and do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen the stakes. This is building individual capacity to have more. And there is a reason why you have to lengthen, why you have to strengthen, so that you may expand. When you expand, then you do not break out. You do not burn out. That is increased capacity. We see in this story that Simon's, Simon's uh, nets were breaking out. They had not got that capacity. So we are encouraging our friends, please, please consistently stretch your limits. This is how the world progresses. This is how we live impact. When we go beyond the comforts of our, of our usual routines. Number two, we must develop a strategic plan of action. And this plan of action is guided by the word of God. Simon Peter said, Master, I have toiled all night. I have caught zero. I have failed. I use all my tricks. But nevertheless, at your word. Nevertheless, at your word. The word of God never fails. The Bible tells us his word will not fall to the ground. His word will accomplish every purpose. So our plans, we must not only have plans, but plans on the word of God. Simon Peter was a man of action. And probably that's one reason why Jesus loved him and chose him. Out of his 12 disciples, Jesus chose four fishermen. I do not know the reason why. In this country now, there is a conversation. The national conversation is about Pharisees and fishermen. But probably there is a reason. There are things that we can learn from the fishermen. Number one, thanking simple actions. Like Simon Peter, he says, nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the nets. Simon Peter was rushed in many ways, but he was a man of action. We too must be people of action. We, must, we cannot accomplish much for God when we sit down in our comfort zones, when we sit down in our places of security. We can experience more of God when we take a leap of faith based on the word of God. And there are many examples throughout history, throughout the Bible, where people believed God's word. 
I could give many examples, but time will fail me. Remember Simon Peter. They were on the lake on one of those days, and Jesus had been behind praying. It was probably the fourth word of the night, and Jesus appeared on the lake walking, and they were terrified, and they thought he was a ghost. And Jesus said, fear not, it is I. And Simon Peter said, if it is you, tell me to come, and I will come. Simon Peter, when Jesus said, come, Simon Peter took to the water, and he walked on the water. Of course, there were other failings he had, but he was the first probably recorded man to walk on water. So what am I saying? We must hear the word of God. In this scripture here, the word, nevertheless, at your word, the Greek word for it is rema. Rema is the revealed word of God. The word of God to a specific purpose, for a specific purpose, to a specific person in a specific time period. And there are many people throughout history that have done that. Allow me to just share one example. Because I'm in the medical field, there was a guy, he was called Ben Yehuda. He was, it was probably in the 1800s, the late 1800s. He was from Russia. He was studying to be a medical doctor. And he fell ill with tuberculosis. And at that time, tuberculosis was incurable, like corona now, or HIV. And he knew he was going to die. Nevertheless, God spoke to him in a dream. He showed, them the land of, he showed him the land of Israel. He showed him the Jordan River. He said, please, go over. Go to the land. Return to the land. And return to the language. This guy abandoned his medical studies. He went back to the land of Israel in the 1900s. He found there was no Hebrew language. The language had died. He discovered his purpose. And then he began to translate from the local language Arabic into Hebrew. And he is created with reviving modern day Hebrew. He had found his purpose by listening to the Rema word of God. All of us as God's children, we have that capacity to listen to the word of God. The word of God, you don't have to go to a prophet. You don't have to go to another person. God can speak to you. The only thing is, Listen to the word of God. Number three. In this story, we learn the importance of partnership. Partnership. We cannot do it all alone. Of course, when Jesus is calling Peter to fish men, he's talking about evangelism. He's talking about winning souls for Christ. We cannot do it all alone. We need each other. And during this time, we need each other more than ever before. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, two are better than one. Two are better than one. They have more reward for their labor. We are more successful when we make others successful. We lose nothing by helping others win in life. We should each take each other's hands and walk together, even during this time of COVID. Remember that Jesus was in the boat. Jesus did not get out of the boat. When Jesus told Simon Peter, launch out, Jesus remained in the boat. Our greatest partnership is with Jesus Christ. Our greatest partnership is with God. When we are with God, we are the majority. There is an interesting story in the Bible. I will refer you to 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 7 to 22. It is about a king of Israel called Hezekiah. And he had loved God and done many things for God. And so the king of Assyria, Sennacherib, threatened him. He mobilized a vast army. And so Hezekiah began to make plans. He made some reinforcements on the walls around the city of David. And around Jerusalem. But it was not enough. But Hezekiah encouraged. The Bible says in verse 7 and 8. Hezekiah encouraged the people. That. Do not be fearful. Of this vast army. Of the king of Assyria. For with him. Is the arm of flesh. But for us. We have God on our side. I want to encourage us. That. When we are with God, nothing can defeat us. The greatest partnership we can have 
is with God. God is on our side. When God is with us, it helps us to do the fourth thing. To overcome fear. To overcome fear with faith in God. Consistently, the Bible tells us, Fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, I am with you. God is with us. Sin causes us to hold back. Sin causes us to lose our confidence before God. As we read in our, in our theme verse, the Bible says, stretch out. Hold, don't hold back. Spare not. When we put our trust in God, then God will deliver us. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is with us. Even as our country is facing this crisis of coronavirus, you may be on your bed. You may have a loved one who is battling with lack of oxygen and they need oxygen. Fear not, God is with us. Allow me to read from the book of Psalms, chapter 46, verse 1 to 4. These times we are living in, there is a cloud of death and a cloud of destruction. But Psalms 46, verse 1, Psalms 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, even though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains quake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams will make glad the city of our God, the holy place, the tabernacle of God, where he dwells. God is in the midst of her. Of her. She will not be moved. Amen. God is with us through this dark night, the God of the mountain. Is still the God of the valley. The God of the night is still the God of the day. The God of the light is still the God of darkness. We will not fear. We must move beyond our fears. Finally, number five. We must focus on what really counts. Simon Peter had been catching fish all his life. He will catch fish and sell and go back to the fish. I mean to the lake and fish. But Jesus says from today onwards you'll be catching men. Jesus, what really counts is to make a difference in the lives of men. Harvesting them for eternity. Are we working for nothing? Are we toiling for nothing? Are we, have, we, have we had this urge that we have arrived? Maybe you have a car. You have a house, you have a job, you have children. Is that all to life? Jesus is encouraging Peter that there is more. We must focus on what really counts. And that is making impact for eternity. Allow me to just tell this story about Joshua. In the book of Joshua chapter 13 verse 1 and 2. The Bible says God spoke to Joshua and says that now you are old and advanced in years. But there, is, there remains still much more land. There is much more land to conquer. I want to tell you, friends, there is still more we can do for God. There is more to life than just getting up early, going to work and sleeping. Are we making impact for eternity? Are we turning souls around? Are we saving men for Jesus? That is success beyond, beyond the wildest dreams. That is success that counts for eternity. Are we impacting our world for God? And God is calling us to ask for more. There is more beyond. There is more beyond. God had told Joshua, you are old, you have done this, but there is more. There is more. Time has failed me to talk about Moses. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, verse 23, Moses was giving his final address, and he was now reminding the children of Israel that do you know what? 
I had pleaded with God. I had asked God that God, you had begun to show me your greatness. You had begun to show me your greatness. Please allow me to cross this Jordan. And probably he had asked God a number of times. So in that verse in Deuteronomy chapter 3, God says, please don't speak to me about this anymore. But you can get to the top of Pisgah. I want to encourage you, there is a mountain we can reach. There is a mountain we can reach. There is more to God. And there is no limit to what we believers can do for God. Please, please, please don't settle for nothing. Don't settle for, for profit here or not. Aim for more. I would like to pray with you. Maybe you are there. And life is a challenge. Life is a challenge. Maybe you have come to your wit's end. But partnership with God can restore you. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 that there is a price and there is a goal. Jesus can resurrect you for that price and for that goal of the upward call of God. Father, in Jesus' name, you may be there wherever you are. If you would like to experience Jesus, and the resurrection that it brings in life. Just repeat these words after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you. I ask you to forgive me my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, come and be my Lord and my Savior. Be my Savior. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I pray for my brethren who may be going through a lot. I know the resurrection power of Jesus Christ can raise us from our failures to having success beyond our wildest dreams when we partner with God. Lord our God, by your spirit, Lord, you will raise us from our ashes of defeat, O oh Lord. You will raise us from our failures. You will turn our lives around. Lord God, to begin to focus on that which matters. I pray for our loved ones, O oh Lord, who are on oxygen and in the hospitals. May you bless them, Abba Father, and heal them and give them encouragement that they can live beyond this time. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you and please always ask God for more. Thank you very much.